and gentlemen, in this video, Andre and I are going to give you the definitive Ford Raptor Buyer's Guide. But before we do that, we have relaunched our auction website, tflbids.com, and we're specializing in selling, hopefully yours, off-roaders and trucks. And right now on the site, you'll find an original Raptor. So check it out, or watch the rest of this video if you want to get to know everything there is about all the generations of the Ford Raptor. Andre, take it from here. TFL Studios has a very long history with the Ford Raptor. Actually, it goes to the very beginning. Back in 2009, when Roman used to film with a potato camera and had a mustache, he actually reviewed the original SVT Raptor short cab, super cab, and here's the video. Roman Mica at the press intro of the new Ford Raptor. So on the inside, this looks pretty standard to a Ford F-150. It's got some kind of funky colors. I see some unusual toggle switches down here. And what I've read about it is that it's actually a truck that can handle like the Baja 500 or the Baja 1000 because it's been reinforced to such an extent. All the suspension has been done by Fox suspensions and they increase the width by eight inches. This thing is so wide that it requires side markers by law because it is basically the width of a truck, semi-truck. Okay. Yeah, so wh why would they make it wider? Because they have to accommodate a, a higher traveling suspension. And in order to do that, they've pulled the suspension down and out and carved out the fenders. The word is that 40K might be a fair price for this truck, even though um, the color is a little bit outlandish, but I guess if you're going to spend that much money, you want people to know that you're driving a Raptor and not a regular Lariat or, you know, a plain Jane F-150. All right, Andre, that is more than enough of that video. Let's never watch it and mention it again. But you are correct. We did review the very first one, and we have owned the V8, and now we own this one. So we are very familiar. So, Andre, let's get started, and not this time with archival videos of me with, uh, you know, never mind. So let's say you want that original V8 Raptor. Well, who doesn't? So what happened was Ford launched the truck back as a 2010 model. And originally they had a short cab, the they call super cab, with a 5.4 liter V8. And they actually made the truck wider than the regular F-150. And they were really the first to do it from the factory. So they had really long travel suspension, uh, really aggressive tires, but they didn't do it all the way because the engine, the 5.4 liter, was not the best potentially for a high performance truck. It only produced back then about 310 horsepower, although it was, it did sound really good. And right now you could find one, well, in perfect shape, somewhere between 25 and 30,000 bucks. But then they put a 6.2 liter V8 into the truck. I'm sure you know what this vehicle is. It's probably, well, it's probably the Ferrari of trucks, the Ford F-150 Raptor. And I'm here in Michigan at the birthplace of the Raptor because TFL next year has a long-term truck that we just purchased. And guess what truck it is? That's right, it's this truck. It's the Raptor, except it's in blue. It's there, there it is. There is the new TFL Ford Raptor and it is blue. Why blue? Because it looks badass. Now we own that 6.2 liter. We bought it in 2014. We kept it for 55,000 miles or about three years and only two things went wrong with it. The steering stopped telescoping and the little module that work the trailer brake controller failed but both of those were fixed under warranty. Now there are four things that distinguish a Ford Raptor from a run-of-the-mill F-150 and let's go over those. Number one of course is the power plant, it's more powerful. Number two is the suspension, it has more suspension. Number three of course is the sexy coke bottle styling, in other words it's much wider. And number four are the tires and wheels. Andre, why don't you go into all four of those please? 
Yep, that 6.2 liter V8 really never failed us. We towed across country with it. It was a really great truck with that six-speed automatic transmission. And it produced about 411 horsepower if you use premium fuel, that is. So that was very, very special. Then for the second generation, you see right here, Ford completely changed the game. They introduced this high output three and a half liter twin turbo V6 with 450 horsepower. Well, that doesn't sound like a big jump in power, but they actually created a whole new truck with lightweight aluminum body and bed and saved about 500 pounds. So the truck became a lot quicker. And they also improved the fuel economy with the second generation truck. Our first gen truck, the 2014, got between 13 and 14 MPG when we were driving it mostly empty. This one, because of the 10-speed automatic transmission that backs up this V6 twin turbo, gets around 17, so they did improve that, as well as acceleration, of course. From the very beginning, the Ford Raptor was meant as kind of a high-speed off-road runner or a Baja truck, so to speak. So, of course, wide body was very important, suspension travel was very important, and the original SVT Raptor had between 11 and 12 inches of travel front to back. And Ford originally chose Fox shocks to work on the SVT Raptor. Those were two and a half inch diameter body shocks and were pretty impressive to begin with. But then with the second generation in 2017, they went bigger. 3.0 inch diameter Fox shocks were introduced. Of course, once again, a wide body truck with around 13 inches of wheel travel front to back. So they improved it a little bit. But then they weren't done yet. In 2019, they went to active shocks, the ones you see right here. And you can tell that because of this kind of anodized orange color on the shock. And they're live valve, that, which means they're active. They adjust in real time to different conditions and the driver can also select different modes. All right, this is my third and final jump. I try to set the speed at about 45. <laughs> These are your reflow pass, right? So when you're in full rebound, this is shown in full rebound. As you start to compress the shock and you pass by this, you end up in your curb zone in here. That curb zone is very soft because there's bleeds in it. And when you start pushing fluid, it goes through the bleeds and back around through the reflow holes and pushes back on the mm -hmm. piston. It pushes through these shim stacks here and back around and then there's another set of shim stacks here. Pressure goes through the pilot hole into this section here where the needle can move back and forth and let pressure bypass or it can hold pressure and then it pushes on this boost valve which pushes on the shim stack and adds compression uh, damping to the system. I think it's what, 300? to 500 pounds of force. Number three. Yes, of course, the truck had to look very, very special. That's why you get those wide fenders front and back. They're also functional, of course, because of the suspension. And I think the truck stands out, especially with those three amber lights in the front, and of course, those red marker lights in the back. And those also are functional because the truck is so wide that those marker lights are required. Hey, Andre, sorry, I'm gonna interrupt your buyer's guide for an important message from TFL Bids. Did you know that we're selling our project truck? Yep, Baby Yoda from TFL Classics. And all the money is going to a worthy cause, an orphanage in Longmont, Colorado. So if you guys want Baby Yoda, and I gotta tell you, I'm pretty sad to see it go because that is one badass looking little race truck. Head on over to TFL Bids, could be yours, and all the money goes to a charity. Number four, of course, it's all about tires for an off-road truck like this. And Ford was basically the first factory truck with 35-inch tall tires. There are always BFGs. And in this latest generation, they're the KO2s. And they're also snow rated. They have a snowflake and also M&S, mud and snow. So it's actually a very good tire package. Still a 35. So the Raptor is about as close to a desert pre-running truck as you can get, which is great if you're doing a lot of desert running, but if you want to tow a lot, don't get a Raptor. It only tows 8,000 pounds. Keep in mind that a regular F-150 can tow almost 14,000 pounds. If you want to haul a lot, don't get this Raptor. 999 pounds of payload. It's not ideal for that. But if you want a big smile on your face running across the desert, 
then you can get a Raptor. You'll also have a big smile when you do something else. Isn't that right, Andre? Guys, it's not what you think. That smile on your face when you actually own a Raptor is when you actually go to sell it because the resale value is very, very strong. If you did want to sell your first generation SVT Raptor crew cab, you can get 30 to 40,000 bucks. Our 2014 that we owned, we bought it for around 53,000 brand new in 2014. And in 2017, we sold it at around $37,000, but it was actually a trade-in. So you can still get a lot of value. And especially these second generation trucks, also keep their value pretty pretty good so that's the smile actually Andre it's much better than that we bought this one for a sticker which is seventy seven thousand dollars but I have a friend who just bought a 2020 Raptor for a hundred thousand dollars dealers are still getting over sticker on new ones especially if they mod them with some better lights and bumpers you know the rest and of course there's something else that's special about the Ford Raptor. It's the interior. Yes, you have special seats. Uh, the center console of the Raptor is actually kind of the same as a regular F-150, although there's some special touches, Raptor graphics that appear, but the steering wheel is very unique. It's really nice and thick, leather wrapped. You have a red marker in the, in the top dead center, because when you're racing off-road, you can want to know exactly where your steering wheel is and where your wheels are and also technology. Let me show you. Even with the original SVT Raptor, Ford introduced additional off-road technology to the truck. They had a special off-road mode and of course it continues here in the second generation truck. As you can see, of course, rear locker. You have four auto mode, basically all-wheel drive mode. You have four high and four low. And then integration continues. And this latest model, the 2020 and the 2019, continued the holistic integration of technology into the truck. You have drive modes here, anything from normal, of course, deep snow, and the Baja and rock crawl mode. And that not just touches the transmission settings and the throttle position, and the throttle sensitivity. It also changes your traction control settings, your shock settings, your steering uh, feel. You can control the steering feel further, of course, from normal to sport to comfort. So the whole truck kind of changes when you change the modes, and that, I think, is very cool. Oh, that is a heavy, heavy truck. Now let's say you don't want to pay over sticker for one of the existing 2020s that's still at the local dealership. You could, of course, buy a TRX, but chances are the Ram TRX is also gonna be over sticker. Or what you could do is you could wait for the next generation Raptor. Now, usually Ford waits a year between the new F-150 and the new Raptor, but not this year. And I would bet the TRX that's on sale right now is actually speeding up the timeline and making Ford introduce the third generation of the Raptor maybe sooner than ever. So it is coming this year, the third generation truck. I was very fortunate enough to actually see it in person and show you a full walk around of it. You can see it on tfltruck.com. Welcome to the world premiere of the new third generation 2021 Ford Raptor. Yes, in the flesh. In this video, I'm gonna give you a full walk around of the new truck and tell you everything we know so far about it. And most of your questions are gonna be answered. What powers it? What about the suspension, interior technology? So let's get going. They're taking the third gen truck up a couple more notches, slightly larger shocks, better exhaust system according to Ford and also 37 inch tall tires are coming this year in 2021. But if you want the ultimate Raptor, the R, you're gonna to have to wait until 2022. Now we don't have a lot of facts about the R, but we can make some educated guesses. First and foremost, 
what's under the hood. It has to compete with the TRX, so we think it's going to be the GT500 V8, which will be somewhere around 760 horsepower. We don't know the pricing. We don't know, well, anything else. Ford is being very tight-lipped about it, but that is coming in 2022. And you're probably wondering how reliable are Raptors? Well, Roman already told you about the first gen truck, which was quite reliable and bulletproof. This truck we've had for about 5,600 miles. It's just about time to take it in for the oil change and some other uh, generic maintenance. But we had no issues with the truck. You know, it never left us stranded anywhere. No engine lights, no other issues. So, so far, so good with this second gen truck. All right, Andre, so if it were your money, would you buy the first gen V8 or the second gen twin turbo or wait for the third gen twin turbo? Because we know the third gen is gonna have basically the same engine as the second gen. You know what? I probably don't have a hundred thousand dollars for the third gen. We don't <laughs> know the pricing on that. Right, we, uh, we don't know the price. And I just rewatched a lot of our old videos. Yeah. So I'm gonna go first gen V8. Oh, dude, you gotta go the R. <laughs> That's gonna be a hundred thousand dollar truck or better yet, you know, go baby Yoda over at TFL bids much cheaper <laughs> or another Ford Raptor that we're selling on this side right now. Yeah, we've got one of the first gens on the side as well. Well guys, thank you for watching as always. This is Roman and Andre saying check out tflbids.com if you want yourself a first gen Ford Raptor or more importantly, if you want to sell your first gen or any other truck or off-roader. See you guys next time. Ciao. Thank <laughs> you.